Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1970 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Seattle Pilots and the Cleveland Indians at Cleveland Stadium. On the mound for the Pilots today is Dennis Leonard, whose record is 1-2 with a 4.91 ERA. And pitching for the Indians is Sam McDowell, whose record is 15-7 with a 3.37 ERA. Okay, I'm back after a day off. I um, wasn't feeling too well yesterday. We've been going through a stretch uh, where we were getting very uh, warm here in southern Arizona. And then the weather just turned. Uh, it's incredibly cold. Uh, and we're going to have rain today, possibly snow overnight tonight. And so uh, just that weather change, it gave me uh, a terrible sinus headache. Not that you really know or care about that, but... Uh, that is why I didn't do a, a, a game yesterday. I just wasn't feeling up to it. And even today, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, lagging a little, but I think we'll be okay. And I've also got some really great news. I have purchased the grand prize for the final giveaway uh, for this uh, 1970 Seattle Pilots or What If Scenario season. Um, I'm going to show you what it is. So we... I will, before I do that, I just want to say that we are, we will start taking uh, participants for the final giveaway. You just need to be a subscriber to the channel and then let me know in the comments below uh, for this game or any game uh, leading up to the final game of the season. Once we get to what, game 161, that'll be the last day that we'll take uh, entries for uh, the final giveaway. Now, you already know what the third and second place prize is just as a reminder or for our new subscribers the third place prize is the 1969 tops aurelio rodriguez uh angels baseball card this is his rookie card but this is not aurelio rodriguez this is the bad boy who substituted for aurelio uh, on his rookie card so a very collectible fun card uh if you're a baseball collector this is a good one to have uh, in your collection. It's actually in pretty good shape on the front. If you have, um, flip it to the back, there is a little bit of damage because the person who I bought this card from, or someone in the past anyway, must have used a little bit of wax to put it in a scrapbook. The good news is it doesn't, when it was uh, removed, it didn't um, hurt the back of the card other than just leaving a little bit of a stain. Um, but still a highly collectible card, fun for a collection, something that you can uh, take out and show guests. It's a pretty funny story. So the second place prize, as you already know, is this 2012 Panini Golden Age Boog Powell autograph card. Boog was the MVP, American League MVP, uh, for the 1970 season, uh, the season that we're currently playing. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to give away a Boog Powell autograph. So uh, this card actually arrives today here at my house, so I'm, I'm glad uh, to have that in hand. That always makes me feel a little bit more confident about the prizes I give away. <laughs> Sometimes I announce them before uh, they even arrive, and then we've had a couple snafus in the past. But I think we're good this time. So the second place winner of the Duck Race will get uh, this 2012 Panini Golden Age Boog Powell autograph card. And then for the grand prize, I think I've done pretty well for myself here uh, this time. Uh, the picture is not great as we pull it up here, but you'll have to trust me on this. This is a 2002 Topps Finest, also just known as Finest, Jim Bunning autograph card. This commemorates his perfect game. Uh, he also had throw, threw a no-hitter as a Detroit Tiger. The perfect game was thrown with the Phillies. Um, it is autographed. Jim Bunning has passed away in 2017, so he's not signing anymore. Uh, so in that uh, way of looking at it, uh, it is a, a rare autograph. Uh, he, of course, uh, was uh, elected to the House of Representatives and eventually became a senator for his home state of Kentucky. Uh, so we have here a Hall of Fame autograph of Jim Bunning, who threw a perfect game and also was elected to the Senate. I mean, how could you beat that? 
It's a really good autograph. I'm sorry I don't have a better uh, photograph for you. I just purchased it last night, um, and it I haven't actually received confirmation that it shipped, but I'm sure it'll, it'll go out today or Monday and be here in plenty of time uh, for the, uh, the final giveaway. So um, there's the three prizes for uh, the final giveaway of the 1970 Seattle Pilot What If Scenario season. Um, that's going to wrap up in, what, like nine days. We're going to do a doubleheader today. It'll be a day-night doubleheader, <laughs> but we'll play in two different cities. Um, I, because I missed yesterday, I do have to uh, you know, play one later tonight um, and get prepared uh, to end this on time, which is March 31st, so that we can get the 1985 Tigers season started on April 1st. Okay, let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. you got to be a subscriber to get in on the contest. And as I mentioned, let me know in the comments below, and I will get you added uh, to the duck race. The duck race will play, take place in game 162. Game 161 will be your last chance to enter. Okay, we're uh, going with our number five starter, Dennis Leonard. Uh, we have yet to see anything truly spectacular from Leonard. Um, yesterday's starter, uh, Dick Rufin, had his second great start in a row. So we're hoping that Dennis Leonard can give us something good. His rating has jumped up to an 80. Uh, so he's at least a league average. And uh, that gives me a little bit of hope. That would give us five starters with an 80 or better rating. Maybe for the first time all year. Everybody in the bullpen is available except for Jack DeLauro. Okay, and then we have Sam McDowell, who is a left-hander. So we have our lineup versus lefties. The bad news is Jose Cruz and Darren Johnson were both listed as tired. So we're going to give them the day off today. Uh, Darren Johnson hits lefties so well. But instead, we're going to move uh, Joe Pepitone to first base from right field. Johnny Jeter will be in right, and Don Bosch will play left. So uh, we're mixing it up a little bit today. See how that does against Sudden Sam McDowell. Let's go ahead and take a look at the official lineup rundown for the Seattle Pilots. Batting leadoff in center field is Tommy Ag. Batting second at second base is Gary Sutherland. Batting third at first base is Joe Pepitone. Batting cleanup at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting fifth and catching is Manny Sanguian. Batting sixth in left field is Don Bosch. Batting seventh in right field is Johnny Jeter. Batting eighth at shortstop is Mark Belanger. And batting ninth is the pitcher Dennis Leonard. Okay, Sam McDowell, yeah, fantastic pitcher in this era. He is making his 36th start, 15 and seven with a 337 ERA. Wow, he has walked 174 batters. I can't even believe that. And he struck out 212 in 270 innings pitched. I mean, if things go badly for him, he might be able to get to 200. No, I guess it's only 10 games to go, so that's probably not going to happen. Uh, 212 strikeouts, supposed to be 223 against him. 11 hit batters, 18 wild pitches. Eight complete games, two shutouts. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 82%. His fastball tops out, I'm sorry, his fastball is rated an 89 and a curveball rated an 81. Overall rated an 80. The 27-year-old lefty is a free agent at the end of the 73 season. Looking at his log. Um, yeah, he's won five decisions in a row. And his last start was against Minnesota, where he went eight, gave up one run uh, on three hits. Eight walks, seven strikeouts. Um, he got the win, did not throw a complete game, and I don't see anything on here against us. So I don't remember how he's done against us this year. Let's take a look at the Indians' defense. Uh, very poor up the middle and on the right side. Center field today is Van Snyder, right? Russ Snyder in center field. He is a center fielder. He's just not good at it. Right field, of course, is Nagelson. He started the last game. 
First base is Don Cash, who's not very good. And, of course, second base is Parker. But behind the plate, they have the best catcher in the American League, Suarez. So we won't be running on him today, uh, especially with a lefty on the mound. Okay, here we go. Tommy Agee leading it off versus Sam McDowell. It's a hard hit ground ball to second. And Parker makes the play. One out for Gary Sutherland. We've watched Gary Sutherland tank it the last month and a half. But we still want to give him a shot as he grounds out to short. Two quick outs for McDowell, and we've got lefty on lefty violence. At one point this year, Joe Pepitone was batting around 280 versus lefties, but you can see he's really struggled. And he gets jammed inside and a ground ball to short. A 1-2-3 inning for McDowell. Let's take a look at the Indians lineup for today. Batting leadoff in right field is Russ Nagelson. Batting second at third base is Bob Bailey. Batting third at second base is Billy Parker. Batting cleanup at first base is Norm Cash. Batting fifth in left field is John Lowenstein. Batting sixth and catching is Ken Suarez. Batting seventh at shortstop is Zoilo Versales. Batting eighth is the center fielder, Russ Snyder. And batting ninth will be the pitcher, Sam McDowell. Okay, Dennis Leonard is making his fourth start of the year. He's 1-2 and two with a 4.91 ERA. More walks than strikeouts. And opponents are betting 3.23 against him. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 40%. He's only got one good pitch so far. That is the fastball. Rated in 81. Overall rated in 80. The 19, actually 20-year-old right-hander is arbitration eligible after the 73 season. So um, he's lost two of his three starts. And really none of them have been particularly good. Giving up four runs, five runs, and five runs. And it won't get any easier against the Indians' hard-hitting lineup. Here's our defense for today. It's good everywhere. Even our backups are solid. Uh, unfortunately, Sutherland at second is not so hot. Uh, I tried to counter that by having Mark Belanger in there with better range. Belanger's got to cover Rowlings and Sutherland at second. Here we go. Russ Nagelson leading off. One nothing. Nagelson's 18th home run of the year. Bob Bailey with the base hit. Bailey on first. And second baseman, Billy Parker. Takes strike one, but Bailey steals second. Only his fifth stolen base of the year. He's 5 for 11. No problem stealing against Sanguian. Two nothing. Norm Cash. Walks. Lowenstein walks. In comes Fred Gladding. Not, didn't get anyone out for the second time this week. Base hit. That'll score two. Base hit. Nobody out. Six nothing. Batting through the lineup with McDowell popping it up. Base hit the left. Bases are loaded. I mean, we're going to play back. Another run at this point don't make a difference, does it? Walk in another run. Billy Parker. Brown ball to first. Eight to nothing. That is what the fifth, sixth walk to Simeon. Grand slam. All right. 
right, top of the second. Rollins popping out, Sangi and popping out. Bosch striking out. Oh boy, let's see here. I think Edgerton can go, t yeah, he can at least give us two if he can make it through one. We're going to bring in the edge. Versalis, fly ball to center. Oh, we'll be caught. Positive baby steps, little baby steps. Checking out. And the pitcher popping out. We go to the top of the third, 12 nothing. <laughs> Johnny Jeter getting his first at bat. So they're already on their third at bat. Jeter with a base hit. Why not? We got nothing to lose. Jeter with the double. His first double of his career. Well, that's something. Here's Mark Belanger. High fly ball to right. That'll get Jeter to third. We have to let Edgerton bat. Have him go on contact. If he can make contact, he cannot. And then Tommy Agee with a runner on third. Two run Jimmy Jack. His 15th of the season. We will not be shut out today. I think Tommy Agee is very quietly a, MV, a team MVP candidate. He had a, what I would consider to be a solid year last year. And look at this, he's already scored more runs, and we haven't even had him in the leadoff spot that much. He's got more hits. He's got more doubles. Um, not as many home runs, but the RBIs are right there. He's walked more, struck out less. And he's been caught stealing a lot more, but we've been trying a lot more. And his OPS is higher. 12-2. And then Sutherland pops up. So the pilots are on the board. It's 12-2. And Russ Nagelson will lead it off. There's a ground ball to Rollins. One out. Bailey with the ground ball to Belanger. Two down and Billy. Parker grounding out to second. I try to get as many um, Caddyshack references in as possible. Miller. We go to the top of the fourth. Good job by um, Edgerton. Oh, Rollins gets hit. That's unnecessary. But that is his 12th, right? That's got to be leading the American League. No point in hitting and running. May as well just swing away. That's a fly ball to right center. Now, I mean, the game doesn't really tell you. It says fly it out to right, but it's very possible the center fielder made that catch in the, you know, in the ledger of the game. I, I, we don't really know until, I mean, we don't know. I mean, I, I could pull up the play-by-play. -play. Um, which is right here, the recap, and it would tell us, but if it says fly out to right, I naturally think it's the right fielder making that play, but the center fielder on a fly ball to right, or, you know, in between, I mean, they'd have to call off the right fielder, so I don't know. I don't think the game is that sophisticated, clearly. We're down 12 to 2. They won't score another run this game. I mean, that's the thing. I could leave Edgerton in there forever. They've already got 12 runs. Edgerton. Pitching well. Very well. Oh, I just jinxed him, didn't I? Okay, we'll take out Edgerton. 
And we will bring in Bucky, Brandon. The buck stops here. Fly ball to center. Two down. Here's Zoilo. Three to the left. Two down. Russ Snyder up. And Snyder strikes out. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Johnny Jeter leading off. He doubled first time up. Scored a run when AG hit the homer. One out. Belanger. Oh, safe on an error. Well, let's see if uh, Bucky Brandon's been practicing his bunting. Yes, not. Oh, there we go. Good punt down to the third baseline. Belanger. At second for AG. Let's see if AG will go deep again. Let's have a double dong day. Nope. Frick it out. Okay. Bottom of the fifth inning. Down 10 runs. A touchdown and a field goal. McDowell just hacking. Well struck ball. 360 feet to center. Nagelson will walk. There's Bob Bailey. Striking out. And Billy. Fly one away. I mean, the beautiful thing is to be a relief pitcher the rest of the way. You're not giving up a run. The game will not allow that to happen with the 10-run differential. So I could put, I don't know, some other schlub in there. I could, I could go to Schlub's RS and pull a schlub off the shelf and stick a schlub in there. And that schlub will get some outs. Rich Rollins. Oh, you know, I want to mention something. I think this is fascinating. I had no, I've never heard of this. And if you guys have heard of this, let me know. So the Tigers, the real Detroit Tigers, uh, in the offseason before this year, signed Keston Hura. The one-time number one prospect for the Milwaukee Brewers. He just never panned out. He had one year where he hit like 14 home runs. He was supposed to be their starting second baseman for, you know, a decade. Didn't work out. They cut him last year. And the Tigers signed him. And I was excited about that. I invested in Keston Hira baseball cards. I got a bunch of his rookie cards. Can't give them away. Can't sell them. Can't give them away. Anyway, the Tigers signed him. And he's raking in spring training, but they sent him down to AAA uh, to play first base. Now, Keston Hura has a clause in his contract. I have never heard of this before. It's called the Upward Mobility Clause. And what that, that means is that Tigers have to make him available to all 29 other teams. And if any one of those teams wants him and they, they can take him and they must put him on their opening day roster. Now, if another team does select him, the Tigers have the option of keeping him by putting him on their opening day roster. Uh, if not, then they have to let him go to, to the other team. It's a clause in his contract. I have never heard of this. Uh, I think it's fascinating, though. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, the, up, the Upward Mobility Clause, it is so-called. Fascinating. Oh, nuts. That is the second home run today for Lowenstein. 21. He's got a granny and a solo shot. That was his first career Grand Slam earlier. Well, Bucky... I probably should have let him pitch versus the lefties with all the lefties in our bullpen. That's on me, but he still had a good day today. Oh, I take it back. He sucks. Wow, Zoilo Vesales hits his 18th home run. He did hit 20 home runs in 64, 
And he had 19 home runs the year that he won the MVP. Well, shoot. Well, I mean, Bucky gave us a couple innings. McDowell, really just the one blemish. He hasn't walked anyone. He's got 172 walks, and he hasn't walked anyone. That's bullshit. That's the kind of thing that pisses me off. I, I, you know, okay, fine, score 12 runs. But, like, the pitcher is not actually performing in the gameplay mode as he has in sim mode. And that's just wrong. That's just bad programming. It shouldn't be two different versions. McDowell's going to double off Timberlake. That's great. Now I'm, I am getting a little angry. And a wild pitch. Awesome. Great job, game. I don't know what to do. Pull the infield in. That will prevent the pitcher from scoring. At least momentarily. I guess we'll intentionally walk. Billy is batting 319 versus lefties to get to Norm Cash. I can pound the cover off the ball. Oh. That run was going to score no matter what I did. There was no way that I could prevent that. Oh, this game blows. Yeah, you can't actually use any real strategies. There's no actual strategy to this game. It's just pushing buttons. I was way off, by the way, on them not scoring any more runs. I think what this will ultimately mean is that we're going to score a lot of runs versus the Yankees when I play uh, the second game today. Timberlake... Not good. Um, all right, we'll bring in a pinch hitter. Uh, you know what? We got it's time to bring the schlubs in, right? Let's get the schlubs some at bats. How about Gary Gestad? His second, uh, a, yeah, at bat this year. This guy will never make it to the majors as a regular. Gestad just don't got it. All right, we'll pull... Uh, do we have any more outfielders that we can use? Aaron Pointer Sisters? Let's bring him in. Aaron Pointer. Oh, he'll walk. Gary Sutherland. You out of there. You suck today. Let's bring in... Where's Remy? Remy Armoso. Pinch hitting. He's 0 for 5 on the year. Oh, there's an infield single for Remy. This is the only thing that makes this game worthwhile today. Joey Pep coming out. We'll bring in Gary Coleman. And a bit off a lefty. Off a Sam McDowell. Well, they're going to take him out. That's weird. And they're going to bring in Jim Kern. Love the Indians, Red Unis. Jim Kern is a rookie in our game this year. And he has not been good, but he was a one-time closer in real life. He's rated an 82. I mean, how can, you, how can you have an 82 and be a 6 ERA? Makes no sense. I'm going to let Rich Rollins bat. Oh, you let me down, Rich. We got, a, we got a run. Made it, things interesting. Let's use our defense here. Let's give these schlubs a chance to schlub it up in the field. So Rollins will come out. Uh, Sanguian will give way to the Duff. Mark Belanger. 
Do we have anybody else to play short that I like? I guess Blodger can just stay in there. And then we got to fix the outfield. There we go. All right, let's get a pitcher in there. I guess it's Earl. My name is Earl. Oh, Earl. You fool. That's a ground ball to second. And Mosa, double play. Oh, look at that. My name is Earl's covering first on that play. And Russ. Danger Russ. Popping it up. Yeah, it feels good. All right. Here's a Duff. Ninth inning, 15 to 3. And Duff gets a base hit. Look at that. Batting average up to 227. Don Bosch. Taking a walk. How many runs do you think they'll give us here for jump runs? Two? Probably two. Kerr's getting all the walks that McDowell should have had. Oh, gosh, Belanger in this position. we got to have somebody better on the bench to pinch it here. Well, let's get the rimp in there. The rimp is, uh, likes the grand salami. Here's the rimp. A one count. Oh, uh, that'll get a run in. Oh, maybe it won't. I don't know. Duffy Dyer, 60% chance, 65 arm. Oh, they can't even give it to us. Couldn't even give, give us a gimme. And that's the ball game. Well, that was a sad way to end. Indians beat the Pilots 15-3. to 12 runs in the first inning. That's usually enough. Uh, let's take a look at the standings. A loss is a loss when you're trying to get closer to the number one pick. I do not like the fact that we are tied with Detroit. Um, White Sox half a game differential. I mean, the divisions are pretty much done. Philadelphia and New York are still going to battle it out, but, and wow, St. Louis is only four and a half back now. Man, they could just have won a couple games there. They would be real close. Five and a half for the Dodgers. Okay, let's take a look at headline news. Baraniac Baseball Daily Beat. Busby Crafts, a two-to-one squeaker. That's all they have to say about that. Transactions. Don Kessinger has a little bit of a bruised rib. Remember, he was on our team last year. We traded for him. Super excited to get him, and then he was pig spit. And now he's betting 253 for Montreal. No home runs. Oh, well. Sometimes they just don't work out. Let's pull up this box score and take a look here. Uh, don't forget, we are giving away those cards starting today. You can get in on it. Uh, be a subscriber. Let me know in the comments that you want to get in. Uh, I will gladly add you to the uh, duck race. Uh, Johnny Jeter got his first double. Uh, Tommy Agee, probably the player of the game. We only had five hits. Um, you know, I, I, you know, let's be honest. Let's give the player of the game to Tommy Agee. Um, you know who it's not? It's not Dennis Leonard. Uh, he gave up six runs. He walked three. We walked ten. McDowell did actually walk one batter, getting his 16th win. He only needs one more win to have a uh, to tie his career high in wins. Um, they had three. They had four home runs. The grand salami by John Lowenstein, who had a double dong day. Of course, the pitcher got a double. Because that happens. And that'll do it. Okay, uh, I will play a second game today. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to get it done, but it'll get done. So stick around for that. And until later on, everyone have a great day.